so hello everyone and thank you for joining us today on Wednesday the 23rd of February 2022 on Vision Store's Exploring Technology webinar with David Woodbridge on getting out and about safely. My name is Tony Wu and I'll be one of your co-hosts and I'm joined by my fellow colleagues David Woodbridge who is the Vision Store AT advisor and we also have special guests um, Bashir Ibrahim and Orientation Mobility Specialist from Vision Australia Service Excellence Team. I'd like to begin the session by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. This webinar will be recorded for those who cannot stay for the entire session and you can access the recording later at Vision Australia's YouTube channel. This is an interactive session, so please submit any questions that you may have uh, for the guest speakers throughout the session by using our chat box. For those that use a screen reader, you can access the chat function through keystrokes alt H or command H if you use a Mac. We'll answer as many questions as best we can and as many as time permits. Welcome, David and Bashir. Good afternoon. G'day, Tony. G'day. I'm David. Uh, over to you, David. Right. Well, for this session, so it's called Out and About. Now, originally, I was going to talk about just sort of, you know, canes and orientation mobility devices. And I thought, you know what? There's a lot more involved than being out and about than just using, you know, a white cane and that sort of stuff. So I thought, I'll just, <clears throat> I'll write everything down madly and then we'll see what sticks when we throw everything against the wall. So the first thing I wanted to talk about really, which is what I wish I would have had Mm, 30 years ago, 40 years ago when I went to university, and that's a good old-fashioned smartphone. Uh, because basically, the smartphone is really the fact that you're carrying around a small computer in your pocket. And of course, when you run things like GPS apps and other apps on the smartphone, then that turns it into a very useful item when you're out and about. So in front of me here at the moment, I'm just going to hold this up and I'll make sure I hold it up in front of the camera. Um, this is my iPhone 12 Pro. So that's sort of, the, I guess, the previous phone from last year. We've now got the iPhone 13. You can still get the iPhone SE 2020, the iPhone 12, even the iPhone 11. And of course, we've got the good old 14 coming out the rest of the, the, sorry, the, towards the end of the year. And then the other one that I've currently got is my, whoops, and I've got too much stuff on my desk. This is my, um, other phone, which just happens to be the wrong phone that I just picked up. Oh, there it is. It's in my pocket. <laughs> I'm highly organised today, Tony. So this is just a, this is a straight Samsung phone. Okay, so it's the S10 Samsung phone. It's been around for about three years. Be higher, David. Yep, it's been yeah, around for perfect. about three, it's been around for about three years, and you know the ultimate thing that I'm going to use both of these things for, particularly when you're on a train, is the magic words "Where am I?" And both of them work very well. Now, with Siri on the iPhone, if you ask Siri where you are, it'll tell you verbally. If you have your Android phone set to Amazon Alexa, it'll tell you the suburb and the postcode. If you have Bixby on your Samsung phone running, which is the, the voice recognition app from Samsung, it'll show you a map. So the one that I always recommend to run on your Android phone for asking where am I, is the Google Assistant app itself. And that will definitely give you your address. And the reason why I sometimes use that one is when you accidentally might fall asleep on a bus or a train and you want to check out where you are, then you can just pull out your iPhone quickly and then or your Android phone and just ask it, where am I? And you'll get the information straight away. The, I'm just going to jump around here slightly because you've probably already seen it in a way. Um, on my iPhone 10 here, um, and I can use this on either phone. On the back here, I've got a, a webbing and that actually holds the phone in place around my neck. Um, and the webbing simply goes over the top two corners of the phone and the bottom two corners. And then you've got that, this lanyard that goes around your neck and it simply hangs around your neck. Um, so if you sort of want to you know, have your phone available hands-free rather than being in your bag or your pocket, um, this is just one of the ways that you can have it available and I'll, I'll go into other options later on. The only option with this one, which I'm always a bit nervous about, sometimes if you're not careful and you do this, I've just accidentally pulled off the, the top left-hand side of where it goes, wraps around the top of the phone. 
And I've heard people say that if not too careful, the webbing can pop off and of course your phone hits the ground. So you just gotta be a little bit careful of these um, neck lanyard type webbing support options for your phone. So basically two phones, um, so both Android and iOS. So iPhone, I would recommend either one. Um, there's a few apps that are run on iPhone that's not available on the Android stuff. And my, I guess my favorite app of all time, um, speaking about apps, is the Soundscape app. And the thing about the Soundscape app is that you can set beacons uh, that will tell you one way how far it is, if you're going towards it, and if the latest version, you can build up what's called a route. So you can have beacons stretching from your home to say your local railway station, and you can literally follow the beacon from point to point. And I guess in GPS terms, what they're really talking about is away points that you've set up yourself. One thing that I use the Soundscape app for a lot is at the railway station, I've always got my beacons set at the front, the back and the middle of the train. So that if I accidentally get on the, on the wrong, on the wrong uh, carriage, I can get off and say, well, where's my nearest beacon? And then I can work out where I am appropriately in relation to where the stairs are, all the lifts and that sort of stuff. Or I get my um, single eye dog to go in the right direction rather than the complete opposite direction to where the stairs or the lifts may be. So the Soundscape app is really, really good. Um, there was a set of headphones that just got announced by Sony a couple of weeks ago or even a week ago. And if you're interested, because the ones that we used to recommend um, you can't get anymore unless you get them on eBay is they were called the Bose frames. And these were the, the, the Bluetooth sunglasses where it sort of beamed the sound into your ears on either side. Um, and they were called 3D audio. So when you turned your head, then you could the sound of the beacons would change depending on where, where your head was facing. So these have sort of replaced those type of headphones now. So when you run the Soundscape app now, it'll actually tell you to go and if you've got if you've got them, connect to the sound link buds. And the interesting thing about the sound link buds is rather than being, you know, blocking your ears and having or having electronic transparency mode, which means you can hear your environment, they've actually got a hole in the middle of the actual buds where the sound supposedly just goes straight into your ear as if you're not wearing any headphones. Um, and then you can control it by your voice or doing sort of gestures just in front of where your, your ear is because it picks up your, your gestures that way. Uh, they're actually fairly, well, they're not fairly, they're 288 the US. So I think that ends up to be about close to, I don't know, 395 or something Australian. So they're not cheap. Um, I haven't played with them yet, so I can't recommend them one way or the other. Um, but just to let you know that next time you run the Soundscape app, if it does ask you about the sound link buds, if you want to go and have a, good, a bit of a good review of them, if you go to appleviz.com, that's appleviz.com, there's a good uh, article there on somebody who is a voiceover user, is a seeing eye dog, seeing eye dog user, and um, they've got some really good suggestions on that particular article. So that's Soundscape. Um, David, just a question yes. uh, for, mm. for me anyway. Um, mm. You can't use like normal regular headphones when you're using Soundscape. You have to use that special type of headphones. Um, yes and no. So if you use normal headphones, what the, what, what the deal is for orientation mobility is that as soon as you block your ear, then you're blocking your hearing from environmental sounds, which is very important, particularly when you're crossing a road, because you want to be able to hear where the cars are coming. Or if you're like me and you're walking along a bicycle track, you want to hear if there's a bike coming behind or in front of you or off to your left or right. So, so earphones that block your hearing are no good. The bone conduction ones that we recommend, which is the shocks, um, some people don't like them because it irritates them where it contacts, contacts your cheek with the bone conduction. And the other thing about the, the aftershocks, which is a little bit like the, um, the Sony buds in a way, is if you've got very environmentally loud noise, uh, you can't hear the headphones properly. So that's the only thing I'm concerned about the Sony ones that if you are in a really noisy environment, i.e. you're in the CBD of a city somewhere like Sydney, Brisbane or Melbourne, and depending how noisy it is, because the sound link buds have got this open hole going straight into your ear canal, you may not be able to actually hear what the thing's talking to you about from your GPS app of choice like Soundscape. 
Um, so it really does depend on, on what you want because with the, for example, the AirPods Pro, um, which is what ones that I use, I've got transparency mode, which electronically lets me hear the environmental sounds around me. I can have noise cancellation, which blocks out the sound, which is no way that I would use them when I'm walking around in public because it's too dangerous. Um, but at the same stage, if I wanted to quickly get directions off my GPS app, I would turn noise cancellation on, listen to my GPS app, and then turn noise cancellation off again and basically just keep going with my navigation. And then you've got the shocks one. So it really depends on, on what you really want to do. I guess with the sound link one, the sound link buds and the aftershocks or the shocks as we call them now, uh, they are really letting you listen to the real sounds around you rather than what the AirPods Pro do, which is electronically transmit the sound into your inner ear. I think I'll just add a couple of things, David, mm. Tony. Yep. Um, yep. The from the orientation mobility perspective, it's it's safety that's the primary importance, as you've mentioned. So it's mm. being aware of what your surroundings and what's happening in terms of the auditory information um, that's about you in order to to you know react or, or you know take evasive action if you require. The other thing is that it's also for your cues and clues as well. You know, being able to make turns or decisions at specific points in time and place um, mm. for, for you to navigate your environment as well. So yeah, it, it's very much a very uh, personal thing, but like mm. David said, the aftershocks are a, a good solution for some people. Mm -hmm. the, the earbuds are, the Bose as well. Some people will use the plugins as well, but will have it in one ear and not both ears. Mm. So there's a variety of um, customization, uh, you could say, that, that needs to be explored mm. in terms of how that works with your functioning and your ability mm. to navigate and move around. Um, remembering that... The other thing is people who are wearing um, the new Bluetooth hearing aids. You know, there's capacity there to pair certain equipment. Victorita Trek is one that um, allows you to pair to your hearing aids as well as, uh, or your phone. So, you know, some, some particular devices allow, like the aftershocks enable you to pair to two devices, your phone, mm -hmm. something else, or whatever you choose. Whereas some of the hearing aids only um, allow you to pair to one device at a time, unless you get the special um, upgrade and hence you can have one or two pairings as well. So there are other considerations to take in mind, mm. those who have a hearing impairment or who are deaf. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. And, and I know when I walk along, along that long tunnel at Central Highway Station here in Sydney, where you've got the platforms coming, you know, up, up a flight of stairs, I, I basically walk practically in the middle of the tunnel because all I'm listening for is that ambient sound of my cane tapping, bouncing off the walls until it actually doesn't, that sound doesn't hit a wall anymore. It basically disappears up the stairwell. Um, and it's that type of ambient sound. And I've actually never tested this this year, but I've never actually tested whether the AirPods Pro is actually picking that ambient noise up or if it's just me being so used to the fact that I'm actually tapping a cane hearing the, the sound come back and go, yeah, yeah, that's where the stairs are. And if I count three, yeah, and that's platform 16, for example. Yeah. I mean, look, that's an important fact because, you know, how people use that skill of echolocation varies mm. considerably. And, and whether, and one of the considerations with any technology is think, and the use of apps and, you know, all the things that are giving you information, um, mm. you know, how does that affect your innate ability or what you've, you've developed as your primary um, mm. skill set of echolocation and so on and is it overriding is it confounding is it complementing and then we also need to think about the um, the selective use of, of these things like for instance mm. um, you know particular devices uh, the electronic devices you'd use selectively in certain situations sometimes mm. you do some people will use it all along the entire route or others will use it when they need to so you know mm -hmm. that that balance is really important um and yeah the primary skill set when all electronics fail your battery dies <laughs> i'm sure yep. david's talked about those scenarios <laughs> you know if you don't have don't. Your, ba your, your battery backup source you know mm. it's old school what do you do and what and skills I... do you have in order to get out of that situation or to manage that situation so it's about the foundational aspects Mm. orientation mobility being yep. the core and then your primary skills and abilities and you know mm. use of your senses and then you're adding the 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 layers of technology and mm. apps and smartphone yeah. or electronic yeah. chains or devices onto that mm. yeah 
No, I agree strongly because at the end of the day, they're an adjunct to what you're doing with your, you know, your primary, whether it's a cane or your seeing eye dog or whatever else you might be using. So yeah, in fact, it sounds I did, this sounds a bit odd. Every now and again, I'll intentionally, you know, because I always think having a guide uh, seeing eye dog is a bit lazy. So I often will go and go for a walk around my neighbourhood just using the cane and find out all the obstacles that I've forgotten about just to keep my skills up using a cane. Because sometimes if my seeing eye dog, you know, might potentially hurt herself or she gets really distracted by a thunderstorm, I've literally got to drop the harness, pick up the lead and actually use my cane. So, yep. um, yeah, that's I think having a good strategy. Ex- I mean, mm. that's, a good, that's a good thing to factor in. And, and, and I've known a number of use, dog guide users over the years who have made it a habit of at least once a week. Um, mm. giving the dog a bit of a break and, and and using their cane and brushing up the cobwebs and just maintaining yep. the skill set because your dog might get sick or, you know, um, a key factor is, you know, your dog's going to retire one day. So mm. the gap between new dog yep. and replacement could be, you know, short or it could be long, mm. you know, based Absolutely. on the match that, that you're waiting for. So maintaining that independent skills, using your mm. cane and maybe some electronic devices as well, um, in the interim is a, is a good way to just get out and about, as, mm. as, as the show says. You know, so. Yeah, no, ab- ab- absolutely. So besides Soundscape and using the, the, the apps, there's, a, there's one app that's good for both uh, Android and iOS, and that's called Good Maps Outdoor Explore, uh, which was previously, previously, yeah, previously <laughs> produced by the Sendero Group overseas. Um, and that's actually a fairly, fairly good one. So uh, overseas too, they've got an indoor version of that for indoor navigation. We don't I think have that in Australia yet, but um, the outdoor navigation one works well. And another really good one for both iPhone and Android is another one called Lazarello. Although I found that one this year, it's really hard to shut that one up. It just keeps wanting to talk all the time. <laughs> um, and when you're trying to concentrate on other stuff, it actually gets a little bit annoying. So, but for iOS and Android, uh, good maps outdoor, and Lazarello work really nicely, as well as your standard uh, maps stuff. So your, your Google Maps and your um, Apple Maps work quite nicely. And the other one, Bishu, I don't know if this is getting less and less because I find myself using it less and less. Is Blind Square still up there amongst the apps that people would still want to use in conjunction with other tech that they might be using? Look, I th- yeah, Blind Square is is still there. It, um... It um, it has paired with um, the Sunu, yeah, their, their mm. app, yeah. Yep. Um, however, there are a few other new players coming on board and so on, and mm. I suppose we'll, we'll get into that a little later on in the yep. segment looking at yep. the, the, the run sheet. Mm. But, um, yep. but, yeah, another one that you might want to mention is um, uh, Clue. Mm-hmm. Clue is another one that's, um, that is quite uh, useful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yep. So, yep. so it's... Um, um, it, 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 it provides you with that beacon technology mm. for, for instance, one application that a particular user has used it for is to locate the entrance to a park and then particular uh, items within that park uh, unstructured area um, so that they can track and uh, there's a low vision component and there's also an audio component for those who don't have that, um, mm. that, that vision. So, uh, but to locate and, and create um, routes, but also regular frequently mm. travel routes, indoors and outdoors. So, you know, there, there's yeah. there's some potential there. Then there are a couple of other apps that are, are working on indoor uh, segments as well, mm. which for navigation. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, the one, one, the one I loved about Clue was where you could actually walk to a destination with Clue running and then you could literally reverse your, your route and then go back exactly the way you came with the actual app giving you directions. I went for that. It was really, really amazing, actually. Yeah, it's sort of like uh, that backtrack function, but yeah, um, for those who want it, it's it's spelled C L E W. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Not C L U. Looking for it, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, the other app um, that I was also going to mention um, was it's more of a, an assistance app. So rather than sort of being a you know a GPS or what's around me or location or finding your way type one. Uh, this one's called Be My Eyes, and th- there's another version that we'll mention in a minute. But Be My Eyes basically is where you, via your microphone and video on your smartphone, you can contact a volunteer, and then they can assist you. And you can use it for out and about, indoors, um, personal stuff at home, if you're trying to work out what's in the pantry. 
because you've literally got a sighted person, if you like, a person with vision looking for it through their camera. And wherever you point the camera, you can say, well, what's this? Can you read that? Or for me, if you're wandering up and down the taxi rank, trying to find out where the front car is, um, you can just point your camera. I do off the side sometimes with my eyes and they can say, yep, you can stop. Because I always have this interesting discussion with taxi drivers. They just want you to take the front car, even though legally you can take any car you like. Um, so I just think, I, you know, I just, I'll just go to the front car and I'll stop arguing with people. The other one which um, Bashir reminded me about before we went on today was the, and I've just had a mental blank, Bashir, the, what's the one that you recorded from Western Australia where you can actually use a, a relative or a friend be that my, does exactly the same guide, thing? Dave, That's be it, my be guide. my guide. Yeah. So have you have you used that with um, customers at Vision Australia? Yeah, yeah. There's uh, quite a few m who have um, mm. suggested that and people have um taking that up uh, because they can nominate uh, a carer or someone they, mm. they know um, yep. to be their, their, their guide. So yeah, it is mm. a good uptake. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and, and I guess that one too, I mean, you're not feeling like you're, you're divulging information that you prefer not to actually tell a complete stranger about or, you know, let people know that, you know, your, your passcode for your house is one, two, seven, nine, <laughs> whatever else it might be. So um, that one works, works quite nicely. Um, so both of them, I, I tend to use uh, my wife. So I, I'll actually use FaceTime, basically. So on my phone, I'll just call my wife. I'll just say, you know, hey, call Ellen on FaceTime. And then normally I'll just say to her, where exactly is your car parked? Because I can't find it. <laughs> um, so, it's, so it's actually quite a good one. The other one that I use, now I haven't used the other one of these, and maybe Bashir can comment. I use an app. Um, and this is available in Sydney and Melbourne. It's called TripView, and it's for Sydney and Melbourne. And what I love about this app is that it actually tells you what platform a train is leaving from. So, you know, at Central, you've got, what, 25 platforms or whatever it is to choose from. At Gosford, I've got um, one, two, three, four platforms to choose from. Um, Strathfield, you've got eight, and, and Parramatta, whatever it is for or something. But it's really nice that when you get to the railway station, um, you know that when you get off, you're, uh, sorry, when you get to the station, you're catching it on platform three, or when you get off a, a train, it'll also tell you what platform you're getting onto. So I know at Strathfield, when I come back from Parramatta, uh, from Vision Australia, I know if I'm platform four, I can just cross over straight to platform three and go home on the train that takes me back to the central coast without having to change platforms. Um, the Move It application, the other one, this year is that more australia-wide move it it's not so much city-based that one is it yeah no that's more um, more general and it's ios and android um, mm. transits ios android as well um, mm. and then you trip you in next there are the the the, the four main ones in terms mm. of public transport apps that that o and ms perhaps use um, yep. and then you have the state apps as well public transport victoria public transport new south wales translink app my yep. translink in Queensland, in Perth's got its own as well. So, so there's um, a number of functionalities within those. Um, mm. Yeah, still uh, some issues with um, connecting. Uh, sorry, getting information and screen readers and conflicts like mm. that. Um, so, it's still work in progress. But, um, but one one point to to add to David, what you were talking about, mm. is that mm. you know different apps for different functions, and so yes, you know, there's different groupings. So you, yep. you, you know, there's more than um, I had one stage I counted something like more than 150 different apps that potentially <laughs> download, yep. and and mm -hmm. you're thinking, well, you're going to be busy for quite mm. a while, and you won't actually Indeed. get out of the house because you're learning how to use them all. No. So it's about narrowing down what your goals are and what what it is that you're actually looking for, you know? Yep. Um, and so, you know, so there's indoor functionality that some people want, indoor nav navigation, what apps do mm -hmm. that? Then you want outdoor navigation, what sort of things can you do that? Public transport. Mm -hmm. um, um, amenities apps are also important, you know, where the taxis, ride chairs yeah. are, where, the, public where toilet? the toilets are. Yeah, Indeed. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Crucial, crucial. Indeed. But, but some of those have better... Uh, functionality in that they'll tell you where the entrance is. Yes. And that's the key because yeah. it's all good and well known there's a, a, an accessible toilet around, but how to get there or where is it? Yeah. You know, so that's the the the, the game changer is if it can do that, then that's great. Yeah. 
Um, and, 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 and look, besides trip for you, Sydney, I mean, I, I'm, I always use a combination of, like you said, I mean, you end up with your own toolbox of apps. So the ones yeah. that work for you the best are the ones that I tend to. So I use, you know, I use the, the public toilet one finder. I use um, Blind Square. I use Google Maps. I use Soundscape. I mean, but it, it always depends on what I'm doing. It's not the fact that I just run them and, and there I go. It's if I'm doing a particular task, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. The one for this today. So if I'm going for a, a bit of a wander around the neighborhood, going for a walk, I'll use Soundscape. There's, you know, I'm not going to use Google Maps or, or anything else. Sure. And one other one, because you, your video assistance apps you were talking about before, mm. things where you've got a, a sighted assistant or someone assisting you. Um, mm. uh, include, yeah, you've got Be My Guide, Be My Eyes, Seeing AI. AI. Uh, Envision's another one. That's a subscription one. I don't know if you've played with that one, Envision, but... Um, yeah, again, these are some food for thought for, for, for individuals. Mm. But um, the there are the, the Sunu app, you know, when we go when you go into the mm. um, the yep. travel aids as a standalone has some good potential, right? It's got some good features, the compass feature and so on. The mm. there's another app that um, the the WeWalk Smart Cane app mm -hmm. uh, as a standalone yep. actually has and, and we've probably get onto this a little later, but it actually has a feature that you were talking about. Multimodal is in the beta stage. So the multimodal mm. ability. So it will give you, um, let's say if I wanted to go from Cooparoo to King George Square um, and then the Queen Street Mall in Brisbane, right? So mm. I, it, it would say, um, give me directions and number of options. So walk to the bus stop, which is right at the front of the office, uh, 50 metres from where I am in the building, and then catch the bus so-and-so a couple of options mm. to get off at um, Adelaide Street at uh, Town Hall and then walk to uh, 150 mm. metres to Queen Street Mall. So it gives you those connections about um, mm. multimodal transport. But it also gives you um, the feature that tells you the next bus stop, your bus stop that you select. So it'll give you a, an alert mm. to say, yeah, uh, yeah, the next stop is your stop, basically. And real time yep. information about what's coming in and what's going out, and yes, uh, and so on. Yep. So that, that's that's uh, something to keep mm. um, keep in mind as as that develops. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Actually, speaking of the bus, is that one still running? And what was it called? Was it from Western Australia again? Was it Next Stop or yeah? There was an yeah. app that, that was that was a trial, wasn't it? I think that was yeah, a it was trial. A tri yeah. Uh, late last um, year, they went for a yes. trial. So I haven't heard um, the update. I should. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll have to ask the O and M's there, but I'm mm. pretty sure that trial was extended. Ended. Yeah. Oh, extended. Oh, okay. Well, that's all. Oh, that's promising. Was, yeah. 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 yeah the, mm. A couple of questions cool. for you. Mm. Uh, Paul has asked, um, "What was the app that tells you which platform that you're on?" That was my one that said it was TripView Sydney for Melbourne and sorry, TripView for Melbourne and Sydney. Does the moving application basically tell you the platform that trains are on? I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, the other thing, the other thing that I didn't like about Soundscape at the beginning, too, by the way, Tony, is <laughs> it actually told you, like you said, where if you said what's my current location, it would say sixty-five Church Street. It wouldn't say sixty-five Church Street, Parramatta, for example. Oh, okay. And I kept whinging to the guys over a period of time. It's like, guys, I'm on a train for an hour and a half, you know, coming from up the central coast to Sydney. Don't tell me what road I'm on. I don't care. I want to know what the suburb is. <laughs> I can tell you how much closer I'm getting to my destination. So yeah, so that was always an interesting one. Um, There's another right. question as well. Sorry. Yes. Uh, right. From Nicole. So all of these apps that you mentioned, uh, are mm -hmm. they available for regional Bendigo um, for buses and trains uh, specifically? I would have to get back to you on that one. Uh, yeah. Okay terms of just yeah. because it does vary from yep, place to does. place and yep. um, the coverage also varies. It depends mm. on the public transport network because each state, the um, the transport department regulates the providers. So it might mm. be a bus provider that's private. However, they're contracted to the state. Like for instance, um, um, in Queensland, TransLink oversees all the private contractors in Townsville, Cairns, Mackay and regional areas, you know, even at Toowoomba. Mm. So they um, contract to the TransLink and then they they follow the guidelines. So, you know, their information should be in line with the state public transport system, technically, but you'd have to, we'd have to check that individually. So, yep. um, so we'll get back to you, Nicole, with your question. Yeah, or, or you could, 
Is there now is there, is there now an M service in Bendigo directly, Bashir, or is it sort of Melbourne type uh, area? It, oh, it's, re, it's remote outreach. Yeah, it's outreach. Stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. That was the word I was looking for. Sorry, outreach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we'll I've been out of client. It's 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 funny you, you you can actually tell I've been out of client services for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. So I don't even I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Apparently. I mean, one of the things to keep in mind is that um, you know we the ATSs, but the O and Ms also run sessions as well individually. But <clears throat> last year during COVID and the year before, we actually ran a couple of mobility app seminars. So there were a series of six seminars or four mm-hmm. seminars, depending on which one people went on. And that was a pilot to see um, what what potential could be of interest to individuals so you know we yeah. focused on an overview of what mobility apps um, are and what the range is and to give people um, an idea of what's available and then we focused each of the subsequent sessions on a, a couple of apps in each one on how to actually use them so that mm. included um, you know the first the second session the one google maps and apple maps you know as an in-depth and um, exploration and then we moved into the the video assistance apps or the artificial intelligence the you know, be my mm. guide be my you know those sort of things and yep. then the public transport apps we looked at you know what 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 they entail and uh include next day move it trip view um mm-hmm. transit and so on and then we looked at all right well what about environmental information apps so microsoft soundscape is, is mm. an example clue is yep. another one and then we yep. looked at some specific um uh, smart cane uh, smart device mm. apps like the Sunu and the uh, WeWalk app as well. Yep. So, you know, they're, they're things to keep an, uh, an ear to the ground or mm. an eye on for when they get advertised and, and you can always request those as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, now, that's a good just, transition. Be- <laughs> just Sorry, under 30 minutes left. So, Okay, that's okay. Um, I was, I was going to say that's a good transition, Bashir, because when yes. you don't want to use, when you can't use your smartphone <laughs> or you, you want to use it as an adjunct to something else, I mean, there are, device that you can also use besides your cane or dog and there are a few of them that we also sell at vision australia so um there's the buzz clip with and all of these are basically sonar detection devices so they hit an object they vibrate you can set them for certain distances most of them will do you know one or two three meters i think the mini guy does up to eight um but they all do different different distances they vibrate and you can hold them Work of them, particularly ones you can put them on your cane. They all work in different ways, but the, the main ones that you might come across, and again, for any one of these electronic devices, I always urge people that um, to get a orientation mobility instructor to show you how to use these properly because you don't want to start making mistakes or assuming that the thing's picking stuff up correctly. Um, so there's the buzz clip, uh, which is the one that's sort of a wearable one. You can also attach it to your cane. Um, attach it to your belt. It's got a lanyard that you can hang around your neck when you're not using it, or you can hold it in your hand if you want to. Um, then there's the mini guide, which is one you can hold in your hand, and you can also um, attach that via the mini guide adapter to your white cane as well, your cane. Um, the other one that basically, um, which is already mentioned, is the Suno band. And that's where you can actually wear it on your on your wrist, um, and that's got both of them. Have, like the other ones, have got effectively indoor outdoor navigation i guess the one that makes the sooner one stand out is it actually comes with an app um, and you can use the functionality app without actually having to use the the sooner band itself so that's also available but the one that i really wanted to get to was the we walk one um, which is basically a smart cane um, we'll get to that question in a minute so with the with the smart cane, uh, so basically, effectively, the we walk cane is a cane with a smart handle, and that's got built-in um, sonar device in it. So when it hits anything from your, I guess your waist or your chest upwards, it'll detect obstacles. Um, it actually connects to the we walk app, um, and if you do have a we walk app, you're already subscribed to the you know the full version. If you don't have a we walk cane, then you just have to subscribe to the we walk app. And one of the things that I like about the Wear Walk app, besides the fact that it tells you that you can, when you choose a route, you can say, you can do walk, uh, Uber, train, bus, whatever you like, and you can end up with a combination of all of them, which is really, really handy. Um, it 
is one of those interesting devices that and again it's like the the Sunaban and the Buzzkeep and everything else. I mean, these I always say that these things you really got to want to trial them out first. Um, what's your overall feeling about the the we walk this year? Yeah, look, I mean, can I just go one step back? So you mentioned yeah. about training. So uh, yes. and you just mentioned alluded to it there is that yep. before you go off and buy something or order it online, yes. you know, if if the opportunity trial. is available. Mm have an assessment, yep. okay? That way you can Correct. look at a range of things that might suit yep. your needs at that time and mm-hmm. make the best first possible purchase for your needs um, and specific situation rather than having an expensive paperweight that um, yeah. doesn't do too much. So, <laughs> yeah, that's I just bought this. Can I have training? It was like, yeah, I wish we would have had an assessment first. <laughs> uh, for every dollar I could give you, for a, every dollar I, that I got for someone saying mm. that, um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it, it, yeah, it, it adds up. So the idea yeah. is... That assessment is really important. Talk it through, mm. work out um, what is going to work for you, right? <laughs> Excuse me. The other one is, well, are you looking at obstacle detection and avoidance, landmark location, finding gaps in shorelines, shorelining, mm. you know, those sort of features? Um, mm. Or are you looking at something that will um, detect obstacles and have an app for navigation, et cetera, mm. et cetera? Or do you just want navigation? So, yeah, there's a couple yep. of different choices. So yeah. one of the things is that uh, the, of the things that um, David mentioned, the devices David mentioned, there are handheld ones. So they're secondary, used mm. with a primary or a primary mobility aid, such as a long cane or a dog guide for safety. Because remember, all the electronic travel aids do not pick up from the, um, the ground level in terms of what you're going to step down or into potholes, mm. stairs, going down, etc. So, yeah, you've got to be aware of the limitations. However, the, the electronic devices will help from the waist up, head, chest, mm. shoulder, for obstacles that the cane won't pick up, right, necessarily. Mm. So, you know, there's a combination of both. Or having advance warning about what's in your line of travel, the wheelie bin that's that's in the middle of the footpath or the park <laughs> car that's along the, the footpath as well as you're walking along at great speed, you know, and all of a sudden the cane hits it. So yeah, it can be surprising if you're, you're totally blind mm. or extremely low vision or at night. Um, so the sonar will help soften the contact because once it starts going, if an obstacle's in front of you at a range mm. that you, you're aware of, that you've set, then, then you have the choice. I either keep going mm. and run into it or I slow down and do what I need to do to go around it or... Yeah, yep. and so on. Exactly. So there's yep. the handheld devices. The one that we did mention is the Ultra Cane, which is a sonar device built into the cane as well for obstacle detection, similar to the Mini Guide and so on. has a full, short range and a long range. The Mini Guide is the only uh, programmable handheld device, right? That mm-hmm. is in its genre, like the Moet sensor. Um, the Mini Guide has a number of different basic ranges and advanced ranges for narrow gap finding and so on. So it's quite sophisticated in programming, yeah? Mm. Um, the, now, when you talk about uh, the WeWalk smart cane, the cane itself is primary. The ultra cane is primary as well. So you've got a secondary device built into a primary aid. So you've got two, two for one, really. So obstacle detection um, and the ability to um, get warning for things that are head, chest, and shoulder height, but also to find gaps in doorways, shoreline a wall or railing or hedge or mm. something like that, find the bus stop, find mm. the audio tactile poles. So there are all, all different sort of uses. The app then for the Sunu as well and the app for the WeWalk, having the app gives you a couple of functionalities. One is the function of getting GPS information, getting information about your surroundings, environmental information, but it also enables you to customize, right? So you can set the distance radius of the search patterns you get for your, 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 what's around, what what features, what um, particular cafes, restaurants, or, you know, particular category you're looking for. You can set the frequency of the voice uh, announcements. You can set the... um, the, again, the the distance unit you can set, you know, Australia, kilometres, metres, miles and yards, US and so on. So you can do that. You can have different languages um, also available, uh, not unlimited, but a number of ranges. And <laughs> then um, you have a number of functionalities such as um, 
the the preferences where you can go in and and again tweak it to your own needs and this is where working through the app and setting it up in the first instance having had an assessment and worked out that yep this is what i want to go down the track of you can strengthen your knowledge and 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 in preparation for you to get your your lived experience mm. you know so so does that sort of so the weak walk smart hang has has great potential it's got um it's a mm. uh, you know i think it's it's up there in terms of what um what people in australia can um can options can can access and and hopefully will be able to utilize to suit their needs so you know mm. you, you can't say that the yeah you know, a dog's better or a cane's better or the smart cane's better or this mm. You can say it to yourself and for yourself because that's your preference <laughs> and that's your opinion. That's right. And yep. you respect that. Mm. However, each to his own and having the choice in order to explore and work these things mm. out in a considered and informed mm. way is the key. And that's what we yep. want to do. And that's why we're here is to look at the products that are available, supportable. Mm. The, the battery life is good. The reception's good. They'll work every time you switch it on. Yeah. Occasionally, there's mm. glitches with everything, like your iPhone and smartphone, you know, mm. uh, or the network's down and things like that. So, you know, it's it's knowing the limitations, but then what the potential is and what your potential is mm. as well, and trying to match that yeah. and develop mm. that. Yeah, no, I, I agree, because I, I, I didn't realise when they walk, because when I walk around here on the Central Coast, the cars are parked, because I've got to walk on the road because there's no nature strip. The bonnets of the cars are facing me. So when I tried to use my Wii Walk, the Wii Walk was missing the bonnet of the car because the bonnets were too low. Yep. So then I switched back to the mini guide or the buzz clip and it, and it was bang on target. So yep. that's the type of stuff that, you know, if I would have, you know, me being a person, I'll just go out and play with anything. But if I would have rung up an O&M instructor and said, can, can you work out why this Wii, not, Wii Walk's not walk, walk, working? Yeah. And then it would have been fairly obvious, like, well, hang on a minute, mate, the angle of what you're using it at is not going to work. And hence the measurement, um, the right size cane is important. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's stride length. All these things come into play. The ergonomics yep. come into play. The yep. the handheld devices like the, the, the buzz clip and mini guide and the um, uh, Sunu as well. On your wrist, mm. you know the angle with which they those are also positioned are, are, are crucial because you know the ultra cane is the same. If you've got a good midline, mm. then it's going to work. You know, according to the um, the the testing situations and the clinical side of things that you know when when mm. they develop this technology. But mm. we know mm. that not everyone's got a great midline, and you know physiology comes into play, fatigue comes mm. into play. So it's it's knowing the the ranges, it's knowing the limitations, mm. it's knowing the width. Um, like you said, David, the the mini guy's got an eight meter range, but that's for a very specific purpose. Generally, Indeed. it's one to yep. four meters, and yep. they're the main ones that people will use. And it's knowing all right. Well, like years in a car, you, yeah, you start off, you don't go take off in fourth. Right, so <laughs> let, let's take off in gear to get a bit of speed, and then we'll we'll, we'll, we'll adjust it there. So it's being able to yeah. mo- use mm. the tech and move within ranges, short range, mm. long range, medium range for the environment that you're working in. A crowded, busy environment. The longer range, mm. you, you're going to get stuff uh, signals all over the place. Mm. Go down to yeah, half right. a meter or one meter. It's uh, a narrow beam. You use a narrow mm. beam or a wide beam. So these are the things where you're actually. Um, uh, applying the technology and the knowledge that you've got mm. to um, to to your situation, but it's also understanding ultrasound. So if you know the, yeah, exactly. the idea mm. behind how ultrasound works, it can give you an insight in, uh, about those anomalies and things that mm. that are there sometimes and, and and not at others, and then the ones mm. that are reliable and so on. GPS is another example. Um, you know, people have got to understand that GPS is not perfect. It's reliant upon the the satellites that are controlled and owned and regulated by the US Coast Guard. Right? So if they want to test them, if they want to take, if they want to turn the satellites off for maintenance and things like that, we don't call them up and say, hey, why are the satellites no. out? Because we're not really going to get too far. But but it's about the free use of that equipment and knowing that mm. yeah, to triangulate, you need actually four satellites to get really good triangle. Yeah, triangle three, yeah. but it's actually four that you need. And knowing yeah. that you know, at certain times of the day when there's cloud coverage or you're in a mm. canyon or something like that or an urban canyon, that the reception is going to be worse than others. Yep. If you're up in far north Queensland where there's cyclones all the time, the awnings are all reinforced with extra lead. 
So the signal's mm. not coming through as reliable as downtown Brisbane or Melbourne, you know, mm. under the awnings. So that, leads to, that, that, that also leads me on to talk about the Victor Rita track. So yeah, um, I always say the Victor Rita track, the Victor track, which is the, the GPS standalone unit, because sometimes if you don't want to carry around or have your smartphone drain its battery because you are navigating via your smartphone or your obstacle detection, de- detection device, you just go back and use your cane, et cetera. Um, one good thing about the Victor track is that it's completely separate to your smartphone. So you don't need a cellular signal as long as the, the Victor track can get a satellite location. Bashir said you've got to, you know, really have four to triangulate properly. Um, the, and I liked it when you talked about canyons and that sort of stuff, Bashir, because I've always found with the Victor track, when I'm in the CBD of Sydney, and I'm assuming this may apply to Brisbane and, and Melbourne and so on, it doesn't seem to pick up as well as my smartphone GPS does. Have you found that? Issue as well, or yeah, that, really? that's that urban canyon. And when people have mm. training and, and assessments, yep. we actually mention that as the first part that the urban canyon effect is is, is exactly that, where the signal um, is dispersed and not as um, visible to the sky in terms of the the unit itself because of the big buildings, or you know, there's 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 there's, there's a whole range of other environmental features that factors that come into play in a, a busy city area you know so yep. so yes yeah, definitely david so knowing those limitations yeah, are mm. very important but the beauty of the victor rear trek is it doesn't use data it's free mm. and um the battery life is very long eight, eight hours up to eight hours you know continuous mm. use so there you go but you know the idea is balancing that up with what you what your, your abilities are and your environmental situation is as well um mm. but being able to record your own um, points of interest. Uh, your, sorry, not points of interest. Your your landmarks and features mm. is a is a great feature for some people. They love to to hear their voice. So there you go. So yeah, it was actually quite funny. One of my mind. one of my friend lives on a farm, and I used to go for walks in their paddock, which is like a 10, 10 acre paddock. And, and and of course, being in the country, there is no cellular access. I can't use my smartphone, <laughs> so yeah. the Victor Trek came in handy because I actually marked the fence, the the, the gate going through the the fence. And it was quite nice because then I could go for a wander around the whole paddock, like trees and bushes and streams. Yep. And then I can actually navigate back to the gate. So that was actually really fantastic. Yeah, yeah. A quick, a quick story about it. Uh, there was a farmer up in uh, central Queensland and 90, 90 hectare property, uh, lost his sight um, very dramatically and, and sudden. Um, and the, 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 the house was about two and a half k's from the gate. So you know, every morning he'd have he'd he'd need to walk the his three girls to the the gate so they can get the school bus into town mm. and then hike it back and then come at the end of the day school run to grab them, bring them, walk them back home and things like that. And you know, we marked things like the borehole, the um, the different gates for the different uh, animals and crops and things like that, so that you know he could pinpoint those particular locations as the crow flies and. Mm. So on, and as you get close to the road network, it kicks into the road network, and and so on. But bus stops, Victor Air Trek bus stops are automatically announced now. So as you walk through the environment, it'll tell you the the, the nearest bus stop, which is a, a good feature mm. as well. Um, the other thing mm. is on when you're on in a car or bus or so on. If you record a particular landmark yourself, it'll still actually announce it, like my place. And as a taxi driver sails past your house. So my place and you go no no you missed it go back so but but remember that um that gps it's plus or minus 10 mm. meters okay it's getting more accurate and before it was what back in uh 10 years ago it was 50 meters wasn't it I mean, oh god yeah meters. absolutely yep and now it's down to 10 meters and in fact the more you use the track the more accurate it becomes right it it mm. it, 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 it um the, we get down to a meter, if not dead on, with some users. So it's mm. uh, it's something that yeah. You know, with all this stuff, practice is also very important and mm. refreshing your skills. Yep. Tony, can I get a time check? By the way, how are we going for time? On mute. <laughs> we have about ten minutes left. Cool. All right. So in in probably in about three or four minutes or less, Bashir, do you, do you want to summarise maybe what you would? I mean, we don't have to do all the canes and everything else, but. I guess when people are going for assessment, what are the types of things that you would look at when you're giving a person assessment if they wanted to start using or having a look at using a white cane or a mobility cane? Yeah, well, for the first time um, user, someone who's never used a cane before, 
it's about you know what what can orientation mobility provide what can it help coach me and then guide me and mm. remember it's an ongoing process david you you you, you know that right it's where do you start mm. and it's yep. the start that is probably the most crucial part in terms of that acceptance you got to be ready you got to be open to mm. new ideas and so on um so you know it, it's basically looking at well how do you get around where do you where do you where um how long you had a vision impairment or um what places were you traveling to and would like to continue to do or what you know if you haven't been a frequent traveler before anyway what would you like to do what are your goals what do you yeah and so we started well what what is it that you would like to achieve yeah. Mm. And then we, like some people might say, I mean, I've heard this quite a lot of times. People said, look, I want a, I want a dog. Yeah. Right. Um, mm. that, that's what I want. So, well, that's okay. That's a, that's a goal. And that could be that that's something we would encourage someone to say, all right, well, let's um, let's start at the beginning and maybe we'll work up to that. And there are some steps to take in order to reach that goal. Yeah. And so that's where the realistic idea and notion of, yeah, you know, orientation mobility as a foundational skill is important because it's a precursor, a prerequisite for advanced mobility aids, such as the electronics or GPS or apps, as well as a dog guide. Does that make mm. sense? So that we're working um, a skill set. So when you go to to university or TAFE or school, there are certain prerequisites that you can achieve and hopefully establish those foundational skills in order then to explore the more complex things that you would like to look at down the track. Yeah. So, so the right. long cane yeah. is about well, what different types of canes and what are they for? This is this is where the ONM mm. specialist would talk to you. All right. Well, there's the ID cane for identification, as the name implies. Right. It's white. Lets people know it's shorter than than the long cane because it's for identification. The individual's got enough residual vision that they can use to detect where steps and stairs are, but not clearly. And this gives them a bit more reassurance in those outdoor public spaces. Just check the depth of the step or the gutter or sweep it across um, once, you know, once or twice just to confirm, oh, is that a shadow or is that not a shadow? Or, yep, it's flat. Yep, I can keep going. So confirmation, but more so identification to let the public know. You know, that this thing about catching a bus, someone put in the chat, how do I know which bus is coming? At bus stops, if you've got a cane or some sort of identifier like a cane or a dog guide or a wheelchair, then the drivers are trained to, in the majority of cases, to, to stop and, and, and ask you, you know, which bus you're catching or if it's mm. designated for that stop, to stop and let you on and help give you assistance. So that takes the guesswork out of you having to wave everything big and noisy it comes down the road so you get garbage Indeed. trucks you get the, the, i've done that before trailer yeah yeah i've seen it before it's it's, it's very nice of them to stop and absolutely people are offering people lifts and all this sort of stuff but so and, and even other bus drivers on other routes like the one outside of cooperoo we have the 209 every now and again stopping in the driver will say oh we what are you guys doing they go, oh yeah we're we're going catching the two, 203 or 204 oh yeah no, no it's, it's about i saw one it's about five minutes away yeah. Mm, so, you know, this is the sort of interaction you have with the public. So taking the guesswork out in shopping centres, you know, in those situations where assistance um, could be useful, then it lets the service providers, staff, emergency evacuation procedures much more, uh, much more conducive because then, you know, people aren't telling you, oh, you know, go to the, go to the, you know, the evacuation point and so on and assuming that you can see. So this is... Mm part of that helping yourself to help others to help you yeah a long cane again is for that situation where you you're, you're looking down all the time you're tripping over you're not certain about what your next footstep is going to be you know slopes up down rough smooth transitions are important as well stairs and steps and negotiating those so part of it is previewing the area you're about to step on within reach and clearing a space for you as you walk and being able to use your residual vision, your hearing, your other senses in a more effective way by having your head up. You, know, you can breathe a lot better if your head's up and you, rather than your chin on your chest and staring at the ground or trying to strain yourself. So relieving some of that pressure and that, that anxiety and that uncertainty about what you're doing can be a benefit of using the long cane. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so there, the, the, the long cane, the, uh, sorry, the support cane is another one where we prescribe those for people who have a balance 
um, issue in relation to their vision. And so unsteady gait and needing a bit more um, security in terms of making those transitions or, or moving around because the depth perception is, is perhaps poor for that individual or their distance judgment isn't quite um, as accurate as it used to be with their, their, their previous vision. Yeah. So there's a combination as well. Some people use support cane and a long cane, um, support cane and a dog guide for physiological reasons as well as uh, practical reasons. Does that make sense? So, so mm -hmm. yeah, there it's being open to different solutions for your needs, okay, and your circumstances and situation. And then you look at the electronic travel aids, the ultra cane, the we walk smart cane, uh, then the handheld devices, and then the GPS devices and smartphone on top of that. Imagine just going straight to everything you need to know about a dog guide, and being an experienced traveler as you are, David. You know the curriculum is pretty full on. And it is so fully free. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you're if you're manage, trying to manage walking down the street, navigating, mm. learning how to cross a road for the you know more confidently for the first time, and and getting about mm. independently without mm. um, being accompanied, and dog handling or electronic mm. handling and learning about sonar and interpreting the signals and what it's telling you, mm. there's a lot to think about. Pretty mind bending. Yeah, absolutely. It can be overwhelming. Yeah. So it's about well, how about we break it up into achievable goals and that's kicks of goals on the way to the big one the grand final right? so but it's an ongoing exactly. process it's about the yeah. assessment comments and, and, yep. and, and sorry and, sorry tony so ah, i just wanted to add a comment for bashir actually or question yep. would yep. you work with your local orthoptist or optometrist to explore monoculars um particularly for those that have low vision wanting to be able to see like a, a bus stop uh, number yeah, absolutely be an option as well yeah no no good thanks for putting that in because that the unseen hero can, can is for people with low vision can be can be the monoculars and the monocular telescopes there's a different range of them and it's about work um, having an orthoptic assessment and then with the o m applying it in the field so very very good device for buses coming towards you at the bus stop yeah not don't stand on the road and and try to read it, but stand on the curb. But that viewing point is really important. But what's the other aspect? You can look at a landmark and a feature without having to walk all the way, for, you know, 50 metres or whatever the distance that you, you're focusing on mm -hmm. and make a decision, you know, especially if you, it, 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 you know, you, you, you've got some deadlines to, to meet and things like that. Or the street signs, if you, you know, to confirm your position or a signpost or something like that, or the green mm. and red signal across the road if you're able to track and find that for the crossing and the audio tactile is not working, perhaps. Yeah. So, you know, there are lots of applications, but that spotting and landmarking and features mm. are very useful. You can use the monoculars in, in classroom situations or university lecture situations as well. If you choose not to sit at the front row or in the middle, you can sit a bit further back if that's what's comfortable for you. And so that gives you options as well, because not everyone mm. likes to sit up the front because no. the myth is that if you sit <laughs> no, up the front... It's down the back theater, where the cool people are, absolutely. <laughs> well, no, that's where the lecturers always ask the people at the back. Yeah, well, that's true, that's so, true. So if you don't want to ask a question, sit at the front. So, there you go. so, so no, all good, all good suggestions. But look, it's about, you know, the ultimately it's about that individualised assessment to look at your needs, what your lifestyle is, what you, what you, where you've been, what you've done, and what you would like to do and achieve. And so trying to match that up and, and get a solution that really, really works for you. Again, it's an ongoing thing. You know, we encourage people to refresh their skills as David's doing with his long cane stuff, refreshing, getting, keeping up to date, keeping mm. confident with that uh, as, a, as, a, as part of his repertoire for mobility. And then the dog guide is, 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 is the main mobility um, aid that he, he uses. So, yeah. That's right. That. And, and, and that's right. And just one final thing I would always like to say is that, you know, even if you might be a, a dog guide user or a white cane user, it's always good to have a backup. So, you know, I don't have two dog guides, of course, but I've always got my cane with me. If I'm just using my cane, because I've had my cane broken in public before by people just running over the top of it, I've always got a spare one in my bag. So that's yeah. one of my safety things because my, my worst nightmare this year is to be stranded nowhere without a way to get out of there. And so the cane is, to me, the ultimate way of being able to actually get your, your way out safely out of certain situations. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, there are going to be some more options um, with types of canes available. 
lightweight ones, um, telescopic and so on down the track that um, I'm sure Tony will be sending out some communications soon, so won't steal his thunder, but the idea <laughs> is, um, is, <laughs> is about um, having options. So, you know, we do encourage a spare cane in your, your backpack or, mm. um, you know, in case you need it, yeah. Um, Indeed. Great. Well, we've run out of time. So any final comments that both of you would like to make before I sort of wrap things up? I think, uh, you know, oh. if you're curious, just ask, mm. send us an email um, yep. um, if in the the adaptive tech specialists and, you know, you, you can talk to them about equipment and apps and things like that. The O&Ms, you can talk about O&M, the canes. And, uh, but don't forget, you know, the majority of people we work with um, work on low vision strategies and skills, mm. maximising their vision to be more comfortable and, and efficient. And so, yeah, they may not necessarily use a cane, but they could use an app or mm. the magnification systems or Zoom um, apps on their, yeah, that's another one in the shop, shopping center and supermarkets using the Zoom, various Zoom apps to read the aisle numbers and things like that. Mm. And then that's true. Uh, find out what the categories are in the, you know, if you're searching madly for something that's very specific to narrow it down a little bit more um, if there's no staff available and things like that. Yeah, so yeah. So, Exactly, yes. and it, like I, I can say that as a, as a blind person too. I mean, when I started, when I had a break, as you mentioned, I had a huge break between guide dogs. At one stage, I went from about eighteen months, and I had to relearn a cane. But it's amazing how quickly you can unlearn something. Because I know when I went from my second dog to my third one, which is that break, I was absolutely—I wouldn't say I was petrified, but I was really nervous about using a cane again. Um, and the nice thing about the cane now is that, you know, and that's why I keep up with it, but it's actually, I know I can be independent. I can be confident. I'm not going to hurt myself. I'm going to be safe when I'm walking around railway stations or in the CBD and, you know, crossy busy streets, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, being trained, being having, having the confidence and the independence is really fantastic. And if you're new to sort of, you know, vision loss and items like that, then I would just say, be brave enough to at least have an assessment because then you'll have somebody that's completely professional and confident in making sure that number one, you're always safe and then giving you the skills to be safe when you're moving around in the community because there's nothing more empowering than being independent. And it may take some while to get there, but at the end of the day, you will get there and whatever app, obstacle detection device, cane, dog guide, whatever else it might be, then Vision Australia can absolutely offer all those different types of options to you. And as Bashir says, it's always based on the goals, where you've come from, where you are now, and what do you want to do in the future? Just one other thing to add, though, Tony, it, yep. it, it's about that conversation, as David said. Mm. Don't be afraid to have that conversation because it's just a conversation. Yeah. Yes. You know, you're not locked into anything. You're not. And if you do decide not to go ahead, Hmm. You can always come back because circumstances change. It's not yep. you, 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 you just don't get one go and that's it, right? So <laughs> yeah, it's, definitely. It's, it's about reviewing your life as well. Right. Because as you mature, hmm. your needs will change. And so it's coming back when that's you right. want to, as you need yep. to, and knowing that you can come back to Vision Australia uh, as you require, depending yeah. on your needs. That, and so your, those things will evolve as you go, yeah? yeah? That's a good so, point, Bashir, because, yeah, I like that point because it's not always, well, I'm sorry, this is a special offer. If you don't take it now, that's the end of it. Well, some people, I mean, over the, I mean, I've been in the field for 35 years and the thing is that some people have said, oh, you know, I, you know, I don't want to, I'm not ready at this time, but I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, I, I can't come back. And we're, well, no, of course you can, you know. It's about a mature organisation providing and being there for when you need to at the time that you're ready so um and then quite often people will say oh i should have done this two years ago <laughs> and you go well better late than never yes. but it's the fact that you you're actually open to that and it's your confidence it's your life and so we're coaches we're supported you know and we're facilitators to help guide you through something that might be a little confusing or you're not mm -hmm. sure what's going on or you you've got ideas and you say you just want rear confirmation and affirmation that that you're on the right track and this is about um that that ability to help you um along mm. that journey or journeys you know mm. excellent thank you so much Bashir and David for such an informative session on getting out and about safely 
Thank you everyone for attending. Please contact Vision Australia on 1300 847466 if you wanted to have an uh, appointment with an orientation mobility specialist or if you wanted to have a chat to IT help desk or if you wanted to have a chat with the Vision Store team, just specify which um, service provider or team that you wanted to have a chat to. At the end of the webinar, there will be a short survey for you to complete. Any feedback that you can provide will assist us in improving our content and the delivery of future webinars. We'd love you to join us for our next Exploring Tech webinar with David in March. So please check your emails and our website for further details. Thank you so much again, Bashir and David. And goodbye, everyone. Bye, folks. Cheers. And safe Thanks, travels. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Vision Australia. Blindness. Low vision. Opportunity. Vision Australia logo. Three navy blue ovals linked together diagonally within a bright yellow rectangle.